Hello everyone, welcome to our learning series of how to use Unreal Engine for architectural visualization. In this video, we will learn how to achieve a post-production to our sample project using a post-process volume. As you all know, most of the ArcVis renders get a final touch for light and color correction using either Photoshop or After Effects. So let's see how we're going to achieve this in Unreal Engine using this post-process volume. So I'm going to head to the left uh, side where we have our modes and tools and write down on the search classes post-process volume and drag it to our scene here. So as you can see, the volume scale is less than our project uh, size and basically to get the effect of the volume we need to do uh, one of two things either to scale up our uh, post-process volume to cover the whole project or we can simply go in the so search details and write down infinite and enable the infinite extent or the unbound option and this is basically will let us have the effect on uh, the whole project without scaling up our volume okay so as you can see our project sample here after adding the materials and uh, setting up the light and scattering the foliage system that we have uh, choosing from the, our uh, Megascan library and to go in game mode you can see that the lighting is totally washed out and brighter than we actually need and we need to set up how we can uh, equalize our lighting uh, brightness our, our brightness on, uh, on the bright area and also the dark area the one we have here like for example is a little bit darker than we should have and to do that we're gonna focus on four main categories and the post process volume and these are the lens the color grading and the film and the rendering feature there's a, a lot of other options that but for our example here for our archivist purposes we're gonna focus on these four categories okay so let's start with the lens and skip the mobile depth of field as it's related to the mobile devices and the first option we have is the bloom. The bloom is basically the effect that you're gonna see when you go to a brighter area. Let's say for example at this point. And once we activate it, we're gonna see two methods for to see the bloom. One is the standard and the other one is a convolution uh, method. The standard method basically once we activate the intensity we can start to see the bloom is less expensive in terms of the other option which is the convolution method the standard is used mainly in the real-time presentation and it is basically uh, adjustable uh, by the intensity and a lot of other options on the below so if you increase the intensity you'll get basically uh, more bloom effect and the threshold rep represent a control over which part of your uh, scene will give you uh, a bloom effect. The higher, the less uh, areas you will get a bloom in your scene. But for our project, we're going to use a convolution because we're targeting a cinematic effect. So the convolution, as you can see, have a, a star pattern that uh, actually uh, give you a nice shape for the bloom effect and it's it's basically also more expensive in terms of performance uh, in our scene but because we're going to use it for a cinematic purposes it's uh, more than enough uh, to get a better effect of the bloom and you can control the uh, the convolution uh, bloom effect by these option at the end of the bloom options as you can see this is the scale where you can decrease it or increase it and also uh, 
the bloom minimum and maximum so if you increase it you still also get a less bloom effect as you can see here and the max the boost max of the bloom so for the bloom effect i think this is more than enough for now and moving on to the next uh, option which is the exposure exposure is the amount of time light is allowed to hit the back side of the camera lens and it controls how bright or dark the image is as you can see here we have uh, two sides of the the bright and the dark area and this is where we gonna use the exposure to uh, balance between the bright and the dark area most of you guys who are uh, familiar with the photography um, setup knows that uh, there are a few factors that affect the exposure and one of them is the shutter speed which is the length of time the shutter stay opened and the longer it's opened basically the brighter the image will be the next one is the f-stop uh, which determines how how wide uh, the aperture is opened to allow more light to go uh, to brighter the image and the last one is the iso or the iso which represent the sensitivity of the sensor and it will it start with a value of 100 which is the default value and basically the higher it is it will uh, write the image more but it will uh, put a more uh, grain effect so now that we understand that uh, uh, the exposure is one of the main uh, options that will help us control uh, and balance our uh, lighting system to our project uh, if we go to the metering mode, we'll find that there are three uh, options of the exposure. The auto exposure histogram, the basics, and the manual. Basic, basically, the auto exposure histogram is represented by a graph, which you can find uh, if you go to show and uh, to the visualize and activate the HDRI adaptation. So as you can see, we have on the left side the parameters that we're gonna see uh, on the right side if we activate uh, all the options we have and basically all of these options represent a control of this graph so in this area or in the heat image that we can see here the blue side represent the dark area and the green represent the mid tone or the brighter area of uh, our scene obviously the graph below represent the the, the the distribution of the the exposure value from the blue which is the darks area to the red which we don't have here in our scene that if we have it it will be actually an over bright uh, area so uh, if we go to uh, the dark area as we can see here we'll see that there is a, a type of an eye adaptation uh, uh, method which represent uh, what ha what's happening in real life if you if you move from a brighter area uh, to a darker area or vice versa and this is really helpful if you are doing a, a real-time presentation especially in the virtual reality uh, as we can see uh, later on in our project sample but if you're gonna do a cinematic animation, actually it is not recommended to have these values to uh, have this effect. Although you can control them uh, by setting up some of the values here. So the min, uh, minimum EV100 and the maximum uh, EV100 represent the dark and the bright uh, aerial values. So if we put the, if we bring up the minimum uh, EV100 uh, for example to minus 5 you'll find that if we go a little bit to the dark area and bring this value also let's say for example ma or minus minus uh, 1 for example you can see that the the gap that represented by the eye adaptation algorithm uh, to see how how the the physical adaptation of the camera from moving from a brighter area to a darkest area is getting less 
and the speed that represent this uh, transition is controlled by the speed up and speed down uh, options so for example if we lower the speed down let's say for example for our uh, value of 0.4 we'll see if we move from a brighter area to a darkest area the graph shows that the the movement is actually uh, getting slower but to uh, for our uh, viz for our arc viz uh, presentation it is recommended if we're going to use a cinematic uh, production here to keep these values as the same so we don't have to worry about uh, the movement from the brighter area to the darkest area but we still we have a dark area here so at this point the exposure or the eye adaptation method is fixed at, uh, uh, at this value we can use the exposure compensation to uh, adjust our exposure value so if you go to a lower uh, value sorry by uh, let's say for example minus two you can see that it's getting more darker but if you increase it let's say for example by 1.5 you're getting a more brighter scene but the problem is you're losing the details and the brighter area and uh, it's recommended not to actually um, adjust the exposure compensation as it will as you have seen will burn the brighter area uh, and you'll see so I would recommend to go directly before going to the further options we have in the lens to the film option the film is basically represent the S curve that is being used in the movie industry so if we activate all the options here the slope which represent the shifting of the slope so bringing this down as you can see bright the image more but if you bring it more to the zero it's washing up your scene and you lose you're losing the details so let's keep this for example at 0.6 and the two represent the the dark area so if you bring this value a lower we are getting a brighter um, uh, a brighter look on the darkest areas and still you don't lose the details uh, where the sun or the light hits the building the shoulder basically represent how you want to treat this uh, bright area so lower value or zero represent there is no uh, effect at all or increasing this value will increase of course the intensity of this uh, burn values so I will recommend keeping the black clip and the white clip as they are on their default value but keep tweaking for example the slope values so we can get rid of a little bit of the the, the gray effect on the building so this is now the the way uh, I would recommend to adjust your um, your exposure value or your bright uh, effect uh, that we have on uh, our scene and as you can see we have lost some of the uh, the color effect after adjusting these exposure values but it's okay as you can actually uh, tweak them more and the upcoming options that we're gonna go further uh, in the lens categories so this is for the exposure that basic basically you're gonna have a less uh, option that will deactivate the advanced option that will also uh, control the uh, histogram graph and the manual represent the if, uh, the the manual adjustments of your camera where you can adjust your camera settings or the camera settings here to match the real life uh, setting uh, but it's not recommended to use this actually in Unreal Engine because uh, you're gonna have an another type of uh, uh, problems if you're gonna use volume light uh, or other uh, effects so let's keep uh, our scene adjusted by the auto exposure histogram. Okay, the next one is the chromatic operation. Most of you who have used this effect and after effect or uh, Photoshop knows that if you increase the value, let's say for example uh, to 0.7, you're gonna get this uh, shift of the green and uh, the blue uh, on the edges. Sorry about that. So let's say for example, if we increase it more, 
you can see that the edges are getting distorted uh, by these colors but uh, keeping this value at point, let's say for example at 0.6 is uh, is or make it 0.55 is a bit nice to have um, let's say for example a less computerized image uh, as a sharp edges on the end of the objects and the offset basically will uh, start to offset this effect from the center so I prefer to keep this uh, at the zero uh, value okay next we have the dark the dirt mask the dirt mask is basically uh, an effect that you can see on the the lens flare so if we go for example to our textures I have uh, downloaded these textures from uh, the internet just write down on Google uh, a dirt max uh, texture and I'm gonna drag it here and we're gonna see their effect uh, later on when we activate the lens flare so uh, we're gonna also increase the value it was a bit like 0.4 and we have a, a couple of options here but it's better to keep them as on default or if you want to tweak them the camera which we have talking about the, the um, it's related to the basic setup and the exposure but uh, the the idea here of the camera settings that it will adjust the camera settings based um, on the post process volume but later on because we're going to use different cameras i would recommend to adjust these values according to your cameras and the scene uh, so you don't need to have a default setup for the cameras the lens flare which uh, as you know is the uh, the flare that you you see from uh, the sun so um the lens flare if you increase it you're gonna see a more effect or a more brighter effect of the lens flare and i'm sure right now we're gonna see the the dirt mass effect let's put this texture for example and zoom in a little bit here So it's a little bit uh, unvisible. Uh, so I'm gonna add a bokeh uh, effect texture so we can see uh, this effect more. We have a bokeh shape, and I also downloaded these shapes from the uh, internet. You can find them by just writing a bokeh shape. I'm gonna use this for example, and I'm trying just to get a closer look for the bloom effect so we can see the effect of the dirt uh, texture on our lens so I'm gonna increase the intensity a little bit let's see now you can see there's gonna be a little bit of dirt on top of the of the camera lens so it's just type of an uh, visual effects to get a better uh, realistic look and for the lens uh, flare effect you can always minimize that and you can change also the bokeh shape as uh, you prefer and you'll see okay so moving to the next one and you're also gonna have lots of options to adjust each uh, part of the bokeh shape and moving to the image effect the vignette as you know also the vignette is one of the uh, famous effect where you can have a dark uh, proportion on the edges uh, you can increase actually this value let's say for example 4 or uh, less than that so uh, it's basically depending on your uh, artistic judgment on the scene the grain of uh, jitter and the intensity also some of the effects that we all know uh, available uh, on the cameras but uh, I would recommend also putting these on their default value unless you have an, a, a, a kind of an artistic way when you want to show your uh, project okay <coughs> sorry for the color grading this is where we come to a, a more uh, interesting point where we want to control our uh, temperature and the global uh, effect and the shadows uh, brightness so the white balance represent the temperature that's being calculated by the camera i have downloaded this image what it shows for example that uh, 
a, a perfect sunny day or a normal sunny day you are gonna have like this is the value you can, that you're gonna see or you're gonna set up in the camera 5500 and if you want a more bluish effect you're gonna go below that or a uh, more brownish effect a more than that so uh, let's say for example if we gonna increase this a little bit let's say for example 7000 and let's say more than that actually you're gonna see that the scene is getting more uh, more warmy in terms of the value here but I'm gonna keep it let's, let's say 7500 and the tent represent what we what what's gonna happen if the the whole scene get tented up by that temperature but uh, it is recommended also to keep this uh, on its value and moving on to the next one which is the global so the global represent uh, a bunch of options that for example the saturation and if you remember when we said that our adjustment on the exposure value have decreased our color intensity so basically if we use this color wheel to adjust the the color uh, saturation and increase the intensity we're gonna get more presentation of our color in our scenes so i'm gonna ask about this for example at 1.5 the next one is the contrast and the contrast is basically where you want to add uh, a more um, artistic uh, look also where you gonna see that for example if you push your uh, your color to the uh, to the for example to the red uh, effect here and increase the uh, the effect of the contrast you can see that you have uh, a two uh, sided effect where the areas that doesn't have the where it's the area that is not in the shadow is being affected by this color and the areas that is in the shadows is getting affected by the other side which is the bluish effect so again this is depend on your uh, judgment of your scene and say for example that we're going to keep it on this warm effect the gamma represent how you want to add a little bit of uh, brightness to your uh, whole scene so again increasing this will get you uh, a bit of more brighter effect and it will affect also uh, the dark area with the shadows but we don't we don't want to actually increase this as it's also add a, a bit of uh, a foggy effect on our scene later on we have uh, the gain and the offset still also uh, another color wheel and an intensity that will change the color uh, proportion of the scene the same also for the offset so these all are values that you can control it seems like this for example if we can put it like uh, 0.9 for example or sorry about that let's keep it as a zero or minus 0.1 we'll increase the intensity okay let's uh, put it at 0.02 I think the zero is the perfect perfect value for this uh, option okay so after adjusting these uh, color grading for example for the global if you're not satisfied with what you see here you can keep adjusting the other values like for example the shadows keep in mind the more you're gonna uh, adjust this you're gonna get more brighter area and more effect on top of your scene so at the end of the day this is all uh, is a subjective judgment on your artistic point of view how everyone will see uh, this effect will go so uh, the last thing we're gonna uh, focus on is the rendering feature where we can have also the ambient uh, occlusion I'm gonna skip the ambient cube mag because it's not gonna give us uh, any uh, effects uh, any um, add-on to our uh, scene here I'm gonna focus on focus on the ambient occlusion so as you know the uh, ambient occlusion will represent uh, the bounces of the light uh, on the uh, corners of the scene the best practice for the ambient occlusion is to head to the lit button and go to the buffer visualization and activate the ambient occlusion 
we're gonna see only the ambient effect on your project so if we for example control our values here let's say for example decrease or increase the uh, intensity of the ambient occlusion and this is where you can see how this effect will look like and the ambient occlusion uh, uh, buffer uh, visualization so this is actually uh, help us in identifying more on the corners but keep in mind you don't want to actually in, uh, have a lots of this effect so it will not be uh, it will not look uh, strange on the corners so there's also uh, lots of other features like the, the ray tracing which we're gonna discuss later on uh, on our uh, uh, coming videos uh, but so far as you have seen uh, the adjustment that we have done on our post process volume have actually improved our uh, project look so if we want to see before and after I'm gonna go and search the tail and write down enable what are we gonna tick enable and we, as you can see this is before the post process volume and this is after that I have a bunch of cameras where we're gonna see how uh, this is gonna look like from our cameras so let's say for example this is one of the cameras and as you can see uh, it represents a view um, showing the depth of field effect of the camera and how things are uh, coming all together with these effects we can also uh, ha double uh, the screen percentage to have a better uh, judgment of this so this will actually give us a more resolution look on our uh, project so I just uh, hit uh, G for activating the gameplay and hide it again to see uh, the effects and the thing also that you can add uh, if you move to for example to another camera I want to show you another uh, effect that you can add let's say for example for this camera if we bring the console command by hitting the button uh, left to the number one uh, key and uh, write down r dot um, sharpen or uh, the tune mapper sharpen and this is basically the sharpen effect so zero represent no sharpen at all and let's bring this value for example for three and as you can see we're gonna have more sharp effect on our image so I'm bringing again the sharpness and hit the upper key to bring the last command you have written just to give you an idea of this sharpness effect if I bring it to eight you can see that the image have more sharpness uh, currently so it's better to keep this value for example at three let's say for example at three and this is one of the effects that uh, most artists use uh, in Photoshop for example to add a little bit of sharpness so uh, so far this is uh, what we have uh, uh, achieved through the post process volume I'm sure uh, when you guys start uh, at, uh, playing more with the options you will get a better uh, uh, understanding and maybe get uh, to a better result from what I have uh, but so far uh, I hope this video helped you a lot to understand how you can handle the exposure values and how you can actually control the, uh, your brightness on your project and the next video we're gonna uh, discuss uh, the, how to add the cameras and start to adding uh, the sequencer and start to learn how to uh, start building up uh, an animation for our project so we can have our first animation look of uh, our scene here so I hope you have enjoyed uh, the information that we have provided in this video and thank you very much. Thank you. See you in the next video.